sister for that wonderful song. And the song says you have to focus your life on the cross. Not only on Good Friday, but it should be daily in our life. Uh, I would like to encourage you to pull out this paper and read this verse, which is the fourth word, Mark 15, 33 to 34. Just keep your eyes over there. And before I go there, there is a little song somebody wrote, which is appropriate for this. Uh, I'm going to sing only one line. Sitam pe sitam phir bhi cruz uthaye Sitam pe sitam phir bhi cruz uthaye Chale hai masiha lahu me nahaye And that is the God we are serving. In the Indian history, it said there was a priest, his name was Siddharth, and he was forbidden not to go out of his palace because of the prophecy came for his life. Either he will be a great king or he will lose interest from the life. One day he forced his servant to go out of the palace and he went. And while they were going out, they saw an old man bent down from the back. And he is looking at the strange man and asking his servant, what is this? And servant says, that is an old age. Is it going to happen to me? Servant says, yes. Further they, they went and there were some people that were carrying their body. And he is asking, what is this? Servant said, that is a death. Is it going to happen to me? Servant said, yes. And that was the turning point. He lost interest. People, they call him Buddha. And that is a so-called God. But here is a Jesus Christ. He is a facing reality. He knows his destiny, where he is going to go. And he is carrying his cross. And let us look here this afternoon what is happening. This is a verse, even theological and theological, and they try to understand. And this is a verse which is a, not given only in two places, it is given in three places in the Bible. You will find the same verse in Old Testament in Psalm 22 and first word. And the same says, My God, my God, why thou hast forsaken me? In the previous verse, uh, Reverend Scott, he presented a gospel about the relationship, an assignment Jesus is giving to his disciple, beloved disciple John, you take care of Mary. Now if you look all the seven words which came out from the mouth of Jesus, it is a full gospel. There is a power in each and every word and there is action. In the beginning we have seen the forgiveness. There is no paradise before forgiveness. So everything is a step by step arranged. And we have to understand the reality. Now, after that, we are, after forgiveness, here you can see the responsibility assignment. Now, if you are saved, you are forgiven, but then assignment comes. It is our job to go and bring other soul. We are not just saved and just sit and enjoy our salvation, but we have responsibility. But now here he goes further. And here he is talking something from the deepest, from his soul. What is going on inside the life of Jesus 
in this fourth word. Now this is a, what I understand is a very important. Jesus was a very anointed person and many people they do not understand Bible and that is why the Bible then is a very contradictory book. How it can happen that God will forsake his only son. In the beginning when Jesus is taking baptism and God is telling this is my beloved son and here that beloved son is forsaken. But this is a reality. Bible is going to say exactly what it is. If King David has committed sin, then Bible is not going to cover, it is going to give the detailed account that this is what even King David, the anointed servant of God, he did. And here is happening. It says, My God, my God, why thou forsaken me? Just to think for a moment, the God is Alpha and Omega. The Trinity was there in the beginning. When God is making Adam, He said, let us make man. The Father, Son and Holy Spirit, they were there together. At the time of creation, the Word was there. John is writing in his book. The Word was there and became flesh for us. And that is a unity throughout the Bible. But in this very moment, we can see that unity is broken. It is a crucial event. I, I do not understand there is one thing. And when I was studying about this God, Holy Spirit revealed me. There were a couple of people who were there and they were part and they were testimony what Jesus is going through. John is looking, Mary is looking, the what Jesus is suffering. It's an agonize, it's a pain and there's a tormentation and you name it, everything is there. And the, here the account says very clearly that and the six hours had come. See, the, Jesus was crucified in the morning at 9 o'clock. After six hours, this is the time frame is around 3 o'clock. And this is happening, there was a darkness. It was a total darkness. Now, Bible says very clearly, there is no relationship with light and darkness. Darkness represent it is a form of evil spirit and all evil forms are taking place. Now Paul is writing that in the heavenly places there are spirits and that spirit you know when there is a warfare they are blocking our prayer when Daniel was praying the king of Persia was blocking prayer are coming down, bringing darkness. It says there is darkness over all over the land. Just imagine it is a three o'clock and total darkness. Now this is a darkness is tormenting. They are acting in a full force. Now there is a tormentation in both the side. Here people they are doing mockery. Say, if you are Savior, you save yourself and save others. He is a king of Jewish. And they will say all short of things, whatever they want to say. And God allowed King David and revealed the reality and he has everything written in Psalm 22. The what Jesus was going through. He was surrounded by the mighty bull of Bashan. God allowed also Isaiah and he has written everything in uh, 53rd, what we read. 
God allowed to see the John Baptist and he's proclaiming, say, look, here is uh, uh, Gary, the scene of the world. God allowed various people. And tonight, let God Holy Spirit also allow us to see the reality. Now, when Jesus came out from the river, and for 40 days, he's going for fasting, but before he started ministry, he was fully anointed. And after his coming, he is performing miracles, signs and wonders because of the power of anointing and Holy Spirit was working through him. But when he is going and entering in the garden of Gethsemane, when he is a prey, is a warfare prayer, and it is a return that his sweat was turned like a blood. That is already totally outpouring the Holy Spirit in warfare is fighting. Now, we, we, many people, they don't understand what is the Holy Spirit and how it fight, how the anointing works. You have to call Isaiah, uh, uh, not Isaiah, Eliah. And on Mount Carmel, there was outpouring of the Holy Spirit and he killed all the 450 prophets of Baal. And then he came down. He poured every anointing and he was tired. Once anointing goes, you ask preacher to pray for me, nothing is going to happen. And he says, I want to die. Because anointing was not there. Here, there is no blur in Jesus. He was beaten. Every stripes took blood and flesh out of his body. From six hours he is in the cross, the blood is not there, there is no water to drink, and he is a thirsty, and his soul was tormented physically and mentally, and this is a condition. And what is the cause of separation? Isaiah is putting that he was smitten. And we cannot, we cannot see at him, look at him. His face was ugly because of our sin, our transgression. All he has taken on him. Let's try to understand the reality and seriousness of our sin. Every sin from the beginning till that day and now he is gathering on the cross. God can see everything, but God cannot allow, yet cannot see as I am. Even though he is a beloved son, when he is looking, and he is looking at like a you and me, and our sin, not Jesus. And he is turning his face away. My dear brother and sister, salvation is free, but Jesus paid penalty for our sin. And here, I try to encourage you, if you let God touch your heart, and if it is really not good Friday in your life, then take Jesus and let your Friday become a good Friday in your life, and God bless you.